and uh, possibly Tom McGee night if the uh, Eagles get on track here. Uh, Coach McGee going for his 300th career coaching victory. He spent uh, 13 seasons at St. Pius X in Pottstown, and this is his sixth season at Norristown. Total of 19 seasons, pretty good record for uh, him, 300 victories. Not many coaches can say they even have 200 victories, let alone nearing the 300 plateau. Allen can't get the three-point play. Back Four out the Wiggins. Here. Underneath, good feed from Solomon. Weldon can't get it to go, but a great feed right there. Norristown players and coaches wondering what's going on right now as they can't get anything to fall. But a foul on number 32, Dave Brooks. Yeah, they're probably scratching their heads saying, what are we doing wrong? But I see the, the shimmers of Norristown coming back around. Uh, they're showing that they, they can come back. Uh, Brad Weldon shooting a free throw. And it was sort of a smart play there. I don't know if uh, Maurice Allen missed it on purpose, but Norristown afforded themselves a nice chance by getting the ball back. Can this team be blown out, do you think? This Norristown team? No, I, I don't think I don't think any team's going to blow them out. Uh, even in district and state playoffs, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it'll be a close game all the way, every game. Brooks with a strong follow there, but he is down on the other end of the floor here. Mike Kelly went up strong, but Brooks couldn't get it to couldn't get the follow. Already, already we have a problem, and I'm not sure what it is. Dave Brooks, is this is the second time he got poked in the eye or something. He, he couldn't see out of the eye the first time. Now he's complaining he can't see again as uh, Dave Torsani goes onto the floor as he was instructed by the referee. And Coach McGee is on the floor. I, I usually don't see Coach McGee get off the bench and argue these things, but he must have a good gripe. I know Torsani and McGee are, are good friends. They're not going to be taking uh, any shots at each other, but they want a, a fair game from the referees, uh, Dave Simononis and Rick Furtick. Well, obviously nothing intentional there, just good hard basketball, and unfortunately Dave Brooks was on the wrong end of that. He'll be taken away by our athletic trainer, Dennis Flynn, checked out. His substitution will be John Connor. Connor's back in. If you're Coach McGee, maybe you say to Dennis Flynn as you're walking by, hey, slow things down a little bit. Yeah, you take, know? Don't, take your time. Do a full examination there. Just We want to make sure he's okay when he comes back onto the court. So now clearing things up on the court right now. And then John Connor will shoot the free throws as he is the man coming onto the court for Brooks. Torasani's a pretty smart coach. He, he knows what he's doing. This is not an amateur coach. He's been around for a while, and uh, he knows exactly what he's doing. These injuries, that shouldn't count. It hit the wire. He knows what he's doing. He's, he's playing a game. That basket was waved off. It hit the wire, uh, the support wire. In, in regulation play, that's uh, uh, out of bounds, and it's out of bounds on the free throw line as well. 0 for 2 for Connor. Wiggins to Green. Wiggins thought about it and wisely pulled it back. Wiggins drives to the basket and it's good. Eric Wiggins with four tonight. I was just about to say, Norristown doesn't seem to be getting much penetration, but there you go, right there, Eric Wiggins. That's, that's just what they need, a little jump start there. Connor goes back up to the basket strong and a foul. Sal Solomon had the ball right there, but it was ripped out of his hands. And then he committed a foul to boot. Pass to two by Connors. Foul on Solomon. That's the third eagle with two fouls, and we're going to see a new face in the varsity game. James Stewart. James is one big young man. Uh, he stands 6'8", weighs what? 200 plus pounds. Could be a professional wrestler. Uh, he's going to come in and spell Damian Solomon and give uh, give Norristown a little bit of height underneath the basket. So Norristown, three gentlemen with two fouls tonight. 
And as we said before, without the services of James Edmonds, so hurting a little bit in that center position. Let's see if James Stewart can come in and help them a little bit. Yeah, and, and they also don't have the uh, services of Daryl Johnson. Daryl Johnson has a poss possibly broken toe, so he will not. he's not even suited up tonight. He will not even play. I don't even know if he's in the building. Uh, so Coach McGee is missing a couple of his uh, – key uh, substitutes in Edmonds and Johnson. He needs to go to a uh, JV player, James Stewart. I definitely wouldn't want to box out against James Stewart. I think he might be able to push a lot of people around. I don't think you really can. Connor with five tonight. Navington out to a seven point lead, surprising a lot of people here at Norristown. Green back inside, the little two-man game. Wiggins, it goes, Eric Wiggins. Yeah, but even if he can't push anybody around, a big body like that inside has got to be intimidating and at least has got to put a little bit of a crimp into the uh, Abington plan as Kavanaugh gets called for a travel there. So Norristown now trying to go on a little bit of a run. You can just, a couple of mistakes like that, and you can start to build up a run. Yeah, every time that Abington makes a mistake like that, Norristown has to capitalize on it and skip back into this game. They're down by five. After this, they could be down by two or three. Weldon's shot won't go. Stewart! Stewart cannot get it to go. He had a shot from two feet away. Won't go for him. Back the other way, Abington. Almost a steal there, and Moore will pull it back out. Coach Torresani screaming hold, even giving the football signal for a holding That's right. call. Allen almost had a steal there, but Weldon will get it. He can't do that against Norristown. A diving play right there from Ed Moore. Great hustle by number 30 right there in red. You know, if he was a soccer player, he would have headed that ball I, if he came through there. That's true. That's true. Norristown trying to use Wiggins against Kelly. Heard That's the slap over here. Foul's going to be on John Connor. Yeah, you try and rip it out of a guy who's six to eight hands. Yeah. A couple yeah. times you might foul him. That's true. Well, he he dwarfs some of those players out there. He makes he makes them look like uh, elementary school kids. Wiggins inside the weld. Be a push in there. Wiggins for three, and it's good. Ooh. Eric Wiggins starting to take over this game for Norristown. Just like that, we're back in. Back within two is Norristown. This team will come back, and they will do it quickly. Green almost had a steal there. Kavanaugh now fell down. That's a travel. He's on the floor, and he slid with his knees on the ground. That is a travel. Here we Allen go. now misses the dunk, and not what Norristown needed right there. It's a two-point game. You need a layup to tie the game. I'll tell you this right now. The fans might have liked that. Coach McGee did not like that because that was a tying basket right there, and they blew it. Turnaround jumper from Connor. No good. James Stewart, strong rebound there. Wiggins back up court for Norristown. Feeds Allen. Wiggins from the corner. Won't go. Rebound Mike Kelly. Coach McGee's been around this game long enough to know that there is never such thing as a sure thing. And Maurice Allen just punctuated that right now. There is no such thing as a sure thing. Because it looked like he could get that easily with a layup or a, a, a high school dunk. They tried an NBA dunk there. Abington. A very disciplined team. We see them slowing it down now as they do not want to fall into that fast-paced run up and down the floor action from Norristown. Stewart went up for the rebound over the bat on number 42, Matt Hosel, his second of the game. How does Matt Hosel get an over the top there when he is, I'd say, two or three inches shorter than James Stewart? I don't know. I know what the referee was looking at, but that's tough to get an over the top call on someone that's shorter uh, than you are. Substitution number 55, Josh Dell. He's in for 42, Matt Kozel. Dave Brooks back into the game. John Connor, a nice job for Abington. James Stewart will go to the line to try and tie this game.
Stewart's first one won't go. Wiggins, the follow. That rim is not friendly tonight. Abington ball. The rim's not friendly tonight, Greg, but there is a piece of glass back there that could be, but they're not, they don't want to seem to use it. They seem to want to make this a finesse game. Finesse games aren't, aren't, aren't worth anything if you lose the ball game. Kelly from the corner won't go. Strong rebound, Josh Dell. Abington very patient. Stepped on the line. Kelly absolutely manhandled by Brad Weldon as he just dominated that exchange there. Wiggins won't go. Stewart and one. James Stewart, a great follower right there. And he's happy about that one too, and he should be, because that brings the Eagles tied at 22 with a possibility to go with the lead here. James Stewart, not a great free throw shooter, but they do have Weldon and Wiggins right there for the rebound. Neither one of those gentlemen gets the rebound there as Dave Brooks back into the game. So 22-22, close as it can get right now. Brooks the jumper, and it's good, Dave Brooks. 16, comes right back onto the floor and doing right. his job. Picking up right where he left off, doing what he was doing right. Evans for three, won't go, and Brooks, that man is there again. Evans, great hustle to get it back, and it won't go, Josh Dell, a rebound. How many times have they missed layups down here, Greg? It could be uh, 30 to 22 by now, 30-24. Brooks the hop step, and Wiggins with the block, back the other way. Offensive. Weldon going to get called for an offensive foul. Well, it doesn't get more exciting than this. Yeah, that's true. This is this is definitely suburban one basketball at its best. There was an opportunity though for Brad Weldon to dish it off to Danny Evans. He was all alone here on the wing and he had an opportunity to score an easy basket. Instead, there's an offensive foul and a turnover. Brandon Blakey pursued by Maurice Allen. Good idea by Blakey to get it out of his hands. <laughs> Kelly now inside, broken up by Norris on Wiggins, pushes it to Allen. Pull up jumper, no good. Kelly got the rebound there. Blakey, well, could have got called for a reach in there. Brooks the drive, easy one for him. Dave Brooks lighting off the scoreboard. Abington back up by four. That's a highlight show that Dave Brooks is putting on tonight. He's making the Eagles look pretty bad as he's just uh, slicing through the defense. We always said that the way to beat this Norristown team is with size. The inside pass to Weldon. Easy layup, and he blows it once again. This Norristown team has to be wondering what is going on. Any attempt they have at an easy layup just will not go. Weldon visibly frustrated right now. I'll tell you what's going on. They're not using their heads, and they're not using the backboard. Wiggins. Wiggins is doing a job, though. He's got, uh, uh, what, that, 11 points? And that's not bad for uh, a team struggling like this right now. Brooks the jumper, won't go, and Wiggins back the other way for Norris. Now he'll push it to Weldon. Blakey almost had a strip there, but he's going to get called for his second of the game. Weldon will go to the line. And the masked man, Milan Dean, is going to come into the game for the first time tonight. Who is that masked man, Greg? It's Mr. Excitement. Now, now the Lone Ranger, I guess, Milan Dean. We were wondering when we would see him as he is, like you said, Mr. Excitement. Maybe he can provide that spark to get Norris down up in this game. He just, he's like, a, he's like an extra battery, uh, battery uh, in the game. He just winds them all up. And with that mask on, it makes it makes it look even more exciting. He's uh, suffered a uh, broken nose, and it was then uh, reset by the doctor. And now he has the uh, Bill Lambeer uh, face mask on. A couple of differences between Bill Lambeer and Milan Dean. I think You're... Milan Dean might be able to jump higher than Bill Lambeer, and Lambeer was about 6'10". We're talking different ends of the spectrum. Bill Lambeer really couldn't get off and jump. Looking for Brooks, but or Kelly, excuse me, but he couldn't handle it and bring it down. Norristown ball. We were watching him in warm-ups there. Milan Dean, nope, didn't affect his legs one bit, that nose. 
that, and there must be no connection between his nose and his legs because he had definitely uh, jumps in uh, pregame warm-ups. I doubt we'll see any effect of the injury from Milan D, and is he not a person to be affected by a lot? Weldon, good strong rebound there. He'll give it out to Dean. Dean will put up the jumper. Ooh. No good. James Stewart, the hustle. <laughs> Off of Norristown, Abington ball. People in the front row had to be fearing for their lives as James Stewart comes running towards the sideline going for the ball. Yeah, he's not the guy I'd be holding up as he came to the sideline. No, I'd clear out. Blakey trying to get away from Allen. The steal there from Milan Dean. He's going up Good for the line. basket. Close to being intentional there from Blakey. That's number three on him, and Milan Dean will go to the line to shoot two. Maybe to put Norris down up by one. And we were talking about excitement, but we're also talking about an intelligent basketball player there. He uses his head. He knew that he was going to be fouled. He didn't go up and try to dunk it and screw the whole thing up. He went up for an easy layup, hung up in the air just long enough, and got the foul. So now Dean. Couldn't tie it with that one. Number 15, Adam Kavanaugh back into the game. Braden Blakey takes a seat and gets a nice round of applause from the bench. If the way Norristown's played in this first half, you, we wouldn't believe that they would be this close in this game. Yeah, they definitely cl clawed their way back to a tie ball game now at 26 with under 20 seconds to go. Ed Moore now. Double teams, but a good feed to Brooks. Traveling. And a walk on Brooks. He got away with that a couple times now, and the referee finally is uh, wise to it. Norristown has a chance here, 10 seconds left, to get a shot, and a smart shot, too. Take the lead for the first time, I guess. Allen underneath Stewart. the Stewart. There we go, Norristown. 28-26. More shot at the buzzer. Ooh. Won't go in Norristown. Two-point lead, 28-26. Good feed there from Maurice Allen. Smart senior leadership. He fed James Stewart an easy layup. Unbelievably, they're up by two. I don't know. I know one person that's not happy right now, and it's Tom McGee as he heads into the locker room first, way before the rest of his team. Norristown shooting a despicable uh, field goal percentage, and Dave Brooks is putting on a show for Abington as he has probably, uh, I'd say, 20 of the 26 points or so for Abington. He has 18 unofficially, and this capacity crowd is seeing one heck of a ball game here. We'll be back with the second half right after this. May I have your attention?